Hi, Sam Tober, Sound of Joy Music Services. And we are redoing one of our videos we did from last year, which was brought to my attention, was not timed correctly. So we're going to redo our video on how to gospelize the hymn, Amazing Grace, in the key of F. Enough talk, let's get started. Always want to open up practicing the scales. Both hands in syncopation just to get them lined up. All right. So, and again, the scales will help you in training your ear how to hear the chords you want to play. Now, I'm Nashville number system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll say octave eight or one again. Back, back down, major, diminished, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. All right. So Amazing Grace is a one of those iconic songs you will hear played almost in every, pardon me, any Pentecostal or non-Pentecostal Pentecostal church, excuse me. Hiccups. So as you can see, our melody is found within the context of the scale, and believe it or not, it's also in the, there we go, in the pentatonic scale, which means so many chords are now open to you. So the gospel sense of any song is knowing the traditional bass song. For those who use the number system, the one, the four, back to the one, the five, and we'll go straight, the one, Four, one, we'll stay in the one, four, one. Now those chords have served its purpose for many years in being able to play this song. But now when the gospel um, culture began to borrow chord phrasing from the jazz scene, they began to add sevens chords. and diminished chords. There we go. So now you had another set of chords to use. Another seventh chord. seventh chord. Now I'm covering all of this because this I want you to be able to grasp where I'm going to start piling on your more, um, I'll call it gospel-like chords. Now gospel music has movement. So now you want to be able to add a bass note to that. Just add on. So now we, it's almost like pancakes. We're putting on layer and layer of changes to begin to get to that gospel feel. As I told you, gospel music has movement and 
without a drummer, that movement begins inside of you first, where you begin to bounce. Now we're introducing the minor chord. Another seven to turn. Movement. So now you see we've introduced movement, not quite all the way gospel, but as I say, gospel borrows from a lot of different genres. As the musician's skill set became available to your Pentecostal churches or to churches in general, they brought their skill set with them. Now, we continue to build on that. Let's now try to go um, melody list and just do chords. So now I left the melody out, but as you can see, I'm still in the same uh, vein of where the melody is, but I'm adding more support to what the melody would have. The trick to gospel is to have that melody and chords working in conjunction with the bass, and it's all a still building process. So now I'm now introducing elements of early gospel where they ha were able to settle in on certain chord phrases to help emphasize where the song is going. Amazing Grace really has one path to its melody, but many paths you can take chord-wise. And as I show you all of these different paths that you can take, it's just a matter of continuing to build on the melody, the very generic chords, the one, four, and the five chord, and then add all the other chords that are around it. Now, that we haven't lost the melody. We've just uh, surrounded it by a bunch of chords. And it gets even more with gospel. Gospel now looks for what attack. Gospel music is very expressive, very emotional. And when the musician is playing gospel music, they are attacking the song. So now the attack becomes from a different, a different place. We're looking at classical movement, which is also part of gospel, and um, jazz.
so many approaches can be used to this song. And of course, in gospel, like I said, the musician, whoever's playing, if he's playing by himself, he has or she has a palette of chords and phrasing in which to pick from. Now I'm showing you some of them. It may be a little quick for a lot of you that are not up to this speed, but this will help give you an idea of how far your journey in music can go. I still haven't touched the far end of playing this song. So let me slow down some of the things that I'm showing you. When I'm saying the jazz end, As you can see, I can walk through just on the right hand, throw jazz in it, throw a little classical in there, and throw some basic chords. notes are found in the chromatic scale and in the major scale and because it's in the major scale whatever note follows or falls in within the melody I can borrow chords from there. Now let's see, I left the left hand out. It's just a matter of understanding placement of chords, placement of notes, and how you want to sound. So for the last demonstration, I'm going to see if I can add everything that I've been showing you in a different speed because gospel is all about tempo also. And there is your lesson on how to gospelize Amazing Grace. As always, if you like these videos, please consider becoming a subscriber. Of course, give us a thumbs up on this one, the like that helps push us up in the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to leave your comments. Take care now and see you on the next viewer, rather, update of a video. Take care now.